मैं शेयर करना चाहूंगा प्रोजी नाइनटीन एटी टू में ही वॉज बॉन्ड इन रशिया एंड टू थाउजेंड सिक्स से प्रोजी कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस प्रैक्टिस कर रहे हैं एंड ही इज अ ग्रेजुएट ऑफ सारा स्टेट अकेडमी ऑफ लॉ इन टू थाउजेंड फाइव एंड ही हैज अ डिग्री इन लॉ एज वेल एंड ही हैज डन हिज डिग्री इन रिलीजियस स्टडीज एज वेल Uh, he was also a pujari at uh, Jagannath Baldev Subhadra Temple, <clears throat> and uh, from two thousand eight to two thousand ten at uh, uh, Moscow Vedic Cultural Center at Botanical Garden Metro Station. So he was a pujari there as well, and uh, also uh he was engaged in uh, vaishnava education in the russian federation uh which is present in the golden ring area uh, in uh, vologda that is in russia and uh, he was also a translator and servant of his holiness bhakti vishrambha madhav swami maharaj and his holiness bhakti anugra janardan swami swami maharaj as well so we will all welcome pruji by loudly chanting hari krishna maha mantra hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari 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 krishna pruji dhanvant ram hari hari krishna hari krishna nice to see nice to see all of you okay Om Agyan Timiranda Syagyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yanata Smaya Shri Gura Vena Maha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So our today talk will be based on this book which is called The Art of Studying and Teaching Scriptures uh, This book is written by Gauranga Darshan Das Uh, His Holiness Radhanath Haswami's disciple, who is uh, the leader of Gorakhan Eka Village project, and uh, in this book the method of studying scriptures is described. So this method uh, contains five stages, and uh, the stages you can see on the screen: Shravanam, Padhanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam, Kirtanam. First, Shravanam, we listen, we hear this uh, uh, spiritual message from experienced person. It is Shravanam. Then, Padhanam means we have to read it by ourselves also. And we have to memorize something. And then, Mananam. Mananam, uh, this word Mananam comes from Manas. Manas means mind, means we have to engage our mind also. In this process of studying sacred scripture and uh, manana means uh, it is the process when I'm trying to recollect and when I'm trying to revise what I uh, have read previously means I engage my mind and I'm thinking how to uh, uh, what what it was about what it was about And then needed yasanam, the next stage needed yasanam comes. Needed yasanam means I'm trying to reflect it and I'm trying uh, by deeply introspecting, I'm trying to understand how to use this knowledge in my day-to-day -day life, how to make connection between what is written in the book and my day-to-day -day life. And then kirtanam, kirtanam means preaching, means we have got theoretical knowledge, we have got some spiritual realizations and now we can share this knowledge with with others we can share this knowledge we can share our inspiration with others to make them also inspired to follow this path of krishna consciousness mm. everything starts from shravanam from this process when we are hearing scriptures from experienced Uh, teacher so uh, why do we need this experienced teacher Srila Prabhupada was giving an example that even if we are trying to get prakritagyan materialistic knowledge anyway we 
have to have some kind of guide, some kind of a teacher. When we decided to become a lawyer or we decided to become a doctor, we cannot become a doctor just by reading books. It is not possible and uh, some practical engagement should be arranged and some uh, explanation from experienced person also should be given. So Gauran Gadarshan Prabhu explains that in this uh, Shravanam process it is very important to hear this uh, spiritual subject matter from uh, experienced person because this, by, uh, with help of this experienced person we can do what? We can grasp the essence of what we are reading about. We can grasp the essence. We can understand what is the context of this particular uh, section of uh, spiritual knowledge. And we can understand what is the mood of particular book or mood of particular chapter or mood of particular shloka. And this mood one cannot understand if he is just Sanskrit scholar. It, uh, this qualification is not sufficient because we can get this understanding of mood if we belong to Sri Guru Parampara, if we belong to this chain of disciplic succession, if this mood, this context and this essence of sacred scripture is explained to us by those who belong to this, um, to this philosophical school and uh, by those who are practicing, practicing this bhakti yoga because those who are not practicing, they have another mood. Their mood is abhakti, abhakti mood. Abhakti means there is no book, bhakti. There is no bhakti means there is no proper understanding of Bhagavad Gita, of Srimad Bhagavatam and other things. So we are going to read some verses from Srimad Bhagavatam in order to understand this subject matter better. And we have this verse from 12th Kento of Srimad Bhagavatam, 12, 13, 18. And here it is uh, said like this. We are going to scroll, to scroll it. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana. Spotless Purana means it has no defects. It is most dear to the Vaishnavas because it describes the pure and supreme knowledge of the Paramahamsas. This Bhagavatam reveals the meaning for becoming free from all material work together with the processes of transcendental knowledge, renunciation and devotion. Anyone who seriously tries to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, who properly hears and chanted with devotion, becomes completely liberated. So, uh, likely we would like to understand what does it mean to hear Srimad Bhagavatam properly, to hear uh, Bhagavad Gita properly. Actually, we uh, we, we have to know uh, how to do different things properly. Like even Srila Prabhupada on this uh, tape recording, Japa tape recording, he told to one of his disciples, sit properly, right? You remember, he told, sit properly. So everything should be done properly. Then we can expect desired result. So what does it mean to hear properly? And this process of proper hearing is described in this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 2.8.4. Shrinvatah Shradayani Tiam Grinata Shasva Cheshtitam Kalena Natidirhina Bhagavan Vishatekridi. So what does it mean? It means that Bhagavan Vishatekridi means Krishna will enter in your heart. And Kalena uh, Natidirhina, it means it will not take a lot of time for him to enter in your heart and to reside in your heart, uh, if you do following things, if you it means what is expected to do. It means that Srimad Bhagavatam uh, should be heard regularly. Persons who hear Srimad Bhagavatam regularly and who are always taking the matter very seriously, 
will have the personality of Godhead Shri Krishna manifested in their hearts within short time. So what does it mean? Um, let's go back to the Sanskrit. Shrinvatak Shradaya Nityam. Shrinvatak Nityam. Nityam means eternally or regularly. Means in, in, in our case it means every day. Every day we should take Srila Prabhupada's book and read at least at least one line. At least one line or two lines or few pages, whatever. Anyway, this Nityam principle should be there. Shrinvatak Shradai Nityam. Nityam means uh, every day, Shradaya means with faith, with Vishwas. Otherwise, what do you use to read these books if you have no faith? And this faith we can get if we associate with devotees. And Grinata Shasvacheshtitam. Grinata Shasvacheshtitam means uh, Cheshta should be there. Cheshta means endeavors. Grinata Shasvacheshtitam. What kind of endeavors? Endeavors that I'm reading this book and I'm trying to understand what is this book about. It means I am trying to engage my mind and my intelligence when I read this book. It means it is not just like I have uh, a lot of free time and I don't know how to waste this time. And when people, when they don't know how to waste their time, their time they usually buy and read some uh, useless fiction books. Useless fiction books. And they read these books and they waste time and uh, usually they are not so much concentrated on this process of reading. But this uh, kind of literature, it is another literature. It is spiritual literature and this spiritual message is meant for everyone, for each and every living entity. And uh, Krishna wants us to come back to his spiritual abode much more than we want. So if we want to develop this desire to come back to spiritual abode of Krishna, we should be really serious, uh, we should read this book uh, uh, being seriously and uh, focused on this process of reading. And then Kalena Natidirkina Bhagavan Vishatehridi. It means that uh, Krishna will Vishatehridi. He will recite in uh, the heart of a reader, and uh, it will not take a lot of time for him. Kalena Natidirkina Kala means time. Kalena Natidirkina. It will not take a lot of time for him to enter in one's heart and to recite there. In case if we are trying to understand the message of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is not different from Krishna himself. So it is important to, uh, to uh, have proper attitude and proper source of hearing. In Srimad Bhagavatam 4.20.25, it is said that, um, My dear Lord, you are glorified by the selected verses uttered by great personalities. Such glorification of your lotus feet is just like chaffron particles. When the transcendental vibration from the mouth of great devotees carries the aroma of the chaffron dust of your lotus feet, the forgetful living entity gradually remembers his eternal relationship with you. Devotee does gradually come to the right conclusion about the value of life. My dear Lord, I therefore don't need any other benediction but the opportunity to hear from the mouth of your pure devotee. So it is very important according to this verse 4.20.25 to listen this spiritual message from Shuddha Bhaktas, from pure devotees, because the transcendental vibration produced by uh, them is very special. It contains, like it is written here in this verse for 2025, it contains the uh, it contains the aroma of the chaffron dust of Krishna's lotus feet. Huh? So there is difference between vibration um, which is produced by pure devotee and vibration which is produced by other devotees. 
uh, that are uh, who are not so much pure or vibration which is produced by materialistic people there is difference so this particular vibration which is produced by uh, Shuddha Bhaktas contains the aroma of the chaffron dust of Krishna's lotus feet and just by listening this vibration it is written here the forgetful living entity gradually remembers his eternal relationship with you with Krishna so it is about mood of sacred scriptures Krishna is giving these uh, sacred scriptures just for each and every living entity to make this living entity closer to Krishna. It is his mood. He wants us to come back to spiritual abode. But materialistic Sanskrit scholars, they will not help us to understand this mood. We can, uh, by, by their mercy, we can understand different details regarding Sanskrit grammar and all other technical points. But it will not help us to grasp the essence of Bhagavad Gita and the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam. That's why it is important to listen this uh, message from those who from those who are practicing and from those who are experienced. It is the process of Shravanam. Also Srila Prabhupada explains that uh, he explains this in the purport to one of the first verses from Srimad Bhagavatam, verse 112, 112 of Srimad Bhagavatam. In this purport, Srila Prabhupada explains that the proper method of receiving this transcendental message is to hear it submissively. A challenging attitude cannot help one realize this transcendental message. It means if we have some questions to, to a teacher or, or if we have some questions to spiritual master, uh, there is use to ask these questions only in case if uh, this particular speaker has already mm, has got some kind of authority in our heart, some kind of authority. It means that if he has no authority in our heart yet, it means that if we want to test him, it is not the way to test him by asking challenging questions. It is not Vedic culture. We should test people who are around us, but uh, this test goes in another way. We can just observe how this particular devotee or how this particular spiritual master behaves in his day-to-day -day life and uh, how it goes his actions and his words it goes together or it differs and if we have faith in this particular personality then it will work when we will ask some questions to this person and this person will answer these questions and we will accept these answers with faith uh, faith to this person and then it will help us to grow spiritually so it is the process of Shravanam and then after a process of Shravanam the next process goes which is called Padhanam and uh, Padhanam means that we should read these books by ourselves also Padhanam means self-study and when we are practicing this self-study, it is important to have some uh, so-called soft skills, uh, soft skills, some skills to organize ourselves when we take a book. And if we don't want to just to sleep during reading this book, if we want to get something from this process, we should be focused and we should have some uh, skills some ability to organize ourselves so Gauranga Darshan Prabhu he wrote in this book in his book that there are some rules how to organize ourselves first of all the first principle is priority priority means we should uh, we should pre prioritize prioritize our self study it means we should consider this process to be really important in our life 
it means that it is not like, for example, I decided to study Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, and then, uh, but uh, I, uh, but some useless things or some useless activities they enter in my life, and uh, I allow these uh, useless activities to distract me from self-study, to distract me from Padhanam. No, it is really important because it is my Bhakti Yoga, it is my attempts to become closer to Krishna, and Krishna is the most important personality in all three worlds. So I should really pay attention to this process. Priority means I have particular time in my shadow, in my schedule, in my shadow to read these books, and I do it. And the uh, time and the uh, duration, it means, it means what? These points, time, duration, it means what? It means that um, from organizational point of view and from psychological point of view also, it is uh, better to have particular time, uh, particular time when we usually start our book reading means if I have if I have a habit to read books for example every day and I started for example at 2 p.m. every day then I should not shift this time here and there I should start in particular time and uh, it will create particular uh, it will create habit in my um, consciousness in my brain uh, if I have a habit not just to read Srila Prabhupada's books, but uh, to read these books in particular time. It can be 6 a.m., it can be 2 p.m., it can be 7 p.m., it depends on our circumstances. But if we have particular fixed time, then it means what? It means we know uh, in advance when we are going to start our reading and our mind is ready for this. It means that it is not just I sit here and I take a book, and uh, when I took a book, I'm trying to be focused. But if I know particular time when I will try, uh, when I will start my studying, when I will start my book reading, it means that my mind automatically will be attuned to this process of reading even before, just because I know that in this particular time I'm going to read Srila Prabhupada's books, and then my mind automatically will be preparing itself for this reading, and it will, this process will be started, for example, I don't know, uh, 20 minutes before, or half an hour before, or maybe one hour before, it depends on how one's mind works. And also, it is important to decide what will be my uh, typical duration of my book reading. Duration, it is important. And Srila Prabhupada uh, uh, told in his classes, many times he told this particular uh, point, that even if you find time to read just one line, one line a day <laughs> from my books, Anyway, it will be helpful. I will show you the quotes. So we have this website, which is called Vani Quotes. Uh, Vani Quotes. They compiled essence of Vedic knowledge. Vani means instructions. Vani Quotes. Quote means quote. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada's books, Srila Prabhupada's lectures, and so on, they are here in this database. Vani Quotes. Dot Org, org, you can find. So here, there are uh, how many? There are at least twenty quotes where Srila Prabhupada explains that even reading one line of my books, it already has some meaning. For example, this quote here. Here, Srila Prabhupada says, "You read one line, you can speak half an hour." They are so full of meaning. His books, Srila Prabhupada's books, they are so much full of meaning that uh, if you just read one line from Srila Prabhupada's books, then you already have some food for your mind to digest. 
you you read one line then you can do your day-to-day -day activities and uh, meanwhile you can meditate on uh, what you have read in uh, in the book can you hear me or not uh, -huh. uh there was break or not is no, uh, no break yes no break. it's fine it's fine no break uh -huh. okay because because my screen on my laptop was frozen for a few seconds so i was thinking maybe oh. there is some technical issue okay now it is normal so it works so uh you just read you just read a little you can read one line or you can read one paragraph or you can read one page but if you read this page or this line or this paragraph with full concentration and with full understanding that it is for me krishna decided to give this spiritual message exactly to me then uh, it gives some food for our mind to digest the whole day we can meditate on krishna's instructions so uh, but at the same time there is particular duration which is recommended by srila Prabhupada that we should read Srila Prabhupada's books every day for, for example, one hour, one hour a day. Or it can, uh, it can be, uh, there can be different standards. Some people, they read half an hour. Some people, they read two hours. Uh, His Holiness Shivarama Swami Maharaj, he is reading five hours a day, just sitting and reading. Otherwise, according to his understanding, if I'm not reading five hours a day, then I'm in Maya. <laughs> His Holiness Shivarama Swami Maharaj, he says like this. Anyway, different people, different standards, uh, but uh, which standard prevails? Usually this standard of one hour reading a day prevails. Usually we, uh, usually different uh, ISKCON preachers, ISKCON devotees, they say about one hour reading program every day and we are going to our slides back and here on our slides the next point is reading place reading place we should have place where we'll be reading these books without being disturbed or distracted it means what it means for example we live with our relatives and we should try to convince our relatives that you, dear relatives, you don't distract me when I read these books. Huh? When I chant Japa, don't distract me. And when I read these books, you also don't distract me. <laughs> and relatives will become worried. Oh, you are uh, too much engaged in all the spiritual activities. You don't want to be disturbed. But what about our relationships and our love? Our love, Sutta Mitra. Ramani Samaj, what about all this story? Well, I don't know. You try to manage this. You try to find common language with your relatives in order to, uh, to convince them that uh, uh, it is really important to read these books being focused. And uh, you can tell them that if you will be progressing spiritually, then it also will influence on them and uh, they also will be benefited so it means that it is not egoistic activity that i'm just reading books for for myself i'm reading these books but uh, my spiritual progress also influences uh, on uh, my relatives and on on other people who are around me so it is not just my personal issue it is about other people also so you try to convince your relatives that you are putting endeavors not just for your own satisfaction to get nectar from Srila Prabhupada's books, but uh, you are acting for his welfare also. It is for them also. So if we have particular time when we usually start our book reading and when we have particular place when we, where we usually read, then mind becomes peaceful because everything is clear when I start to read these books and where I will start to read these books. 
And then it is much more better to be focused and to be determined to read these books. It is the next point, concentration and determination. We are trying to create particular um, circumstances for our uh, facility, circumstances for our mind to be focused. We uh, were planning particular time to read. We choose particular place where we are reading these books. And then it is easier to be determined. And Srila Prabhupada, he explains in Nectar of Instruction that it is very important to be determined and to be enthusiastic when we are practicing uh, Krishna consciousness. It can be, uh, it is relevant to the process of uh, reading Srila Prabhupada's books. It is relevant to any kind of Krishna conscious activities. Here in Nectar of Instruction, in uh, purport to the verse number three, Srila Prabhupada explains, one should accept this opportunity to return home back to Godhead very enthusiastically. Without enthusiasm, one cannot be successful. Even in the material world, one has to be very enthusiastic in his particular field of activity. Yes, that's right. In his particular field of activity. Okay, okay. Uh, field of activity in order to become successful. A student, businessman, artist or anyone else who wants success in his line must be enthusiastic. Huh? Similarly, one has to be very enthusiastic in devotional service. Enthusiasm means action, but action for whom? The answer is that one should always act for Krishna. Krishna Artha Kila Cheshta. Cheshta means endeavors, endeavors for Krishna. So, um, enthusiasm is very important and uh, it is one more reason why we should uh, listen sacred scriptures from the lotus leaves of uh, spiritual master or lotus leaves of uh, exalted devotees because they are already enthusiastic about this. And uh, when we are listening to them, then we get this enthusiasm from them to read these books and also as we have read from that verse from Srimad Bhagavatam we get this understanding that Krishna is waiting for us huh? Krishna is waiting for us because this dust from Krishna's lotus feet it is there in uh, the uh, vibration which is produced by pure devotees this dust uh, from uh, Krishna's lotus feet is there so by listening this spiritual message from them, we can feel that it is about us and it is about Krishna who is our uh, well-wisher, eternal well-wisher. And we're going back to the slides and, uh, uh, and we have, how much time do we have for speaking? 10 minutes more as far as I know, right? 10 minutes more. So um, yeah, that's sufficient time. That's okay. Uh, okay, one moment. Mm -hmm. The next point is reading. And there are two methods how to read uh, Srila Prabhupada's books. One method is cover to cover, means to read the whole book, chapter after chapter. And usually we do like this especially when we go through our educational courses like Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vaibhava and so on. And uh, uh, this systematical studying of sacred scriptures is really important and for that we really have to read uh, this book in this particular sequence. First chapter, then second chapter, then third chapter and so on because there is particular logic. Uh, why uh, first chapter goes after the third one and so on and so on. But at the same time there is so-called selective reading. Selective reading means that I'm trying to understand particular subject matter. For example, I'm trying to understand um, modes of material nature. And I'm reading about these modes of material nature 
from different sources. I read particular chapter from Bhagavad Gita. Then I open particular chapters in Srimad Bhagavatam in order to understand this particular part. Also, I take Chaitanya Charitamrita and I take particular sections where it is written about modes of material nature. And this selective reading is also allowed, it is also important, also nice, also authoritative process. If we want to get understanding of particular subject matter, we can uh, freely read different Srila Prabhupada's books and collect different information from different books. It is also possible. Also, uh, Gauranga Darshan Prabhu, he says about Lila and Tattva. We read Srila Prabhupada's books and some Lilas are described here. Krishna Lila, Chaitanya Lila, and so on and so on. Nrisim Hadeva Lila, Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman Lila, Jagannath Lila. And at the same time, there is philosophy, there is tattva. And uh, he explains in his book that it is important to read both. Because sometimes some devotees, they are more philosophically inclined. They are not so much interest, interested in stories, but they are reading philosophy. They are more focused on philosophy. And uh, some people, they are more interested in stories. And when... Uh, uh, when uh, some philosophical part comes here, they become bored. They feel themselves bore, uh, bored that uh, why all this philosophy is here. But anyway, both parts are important. Lila is important and philosophy is important. Philosophy helps us to understand Lila properly and Lila helps us to understand how Krishna Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and their pure devotees, how they implement this philosophy in practice. So it is interrelated. And also, <coughs> each and every Srila Prabhupada's books, book has structure and flow, means there is particular logic of this narration. And in order to understand this logic of this narration, one should take this systematical uh, Vaishnava education. That's why you please visit uh, these educational courses, Bhakti Shastri and so on. You please attend, you please take these courses in Vrindavan Institute or Mayapur Institute and so on. And in such way you will get this systematical, uh, systematical education. It is important to uh, have systematical understanding of sacred scriptures. You can get nice education in Mayapur Institute or in Vrindavan Institute. And it doesn't mean that you have to, uh, uh, you have to, <laughs> uh, to do it right now, today, take a ticket and go to Mayapur and so on. No, you have other things to do. But anyway, just, um, just remember that there is such nice opportunity which is arranged by ISKCON devotees by exalted Vaishnavas, uh, this opportunity to stay in Holy Dham and to study sacred scriptures. And if this opportunity will be, will be there in your life, please don't miss this opportunity, please use it. Or take uh, systematical education courses like Bhakti Shastri and so on, and so on uh, at your place if it is organized but by your uh, senior devotees by your authorities, then you take it here in Delhi and in other cities of India. It is also possible. So uh, it is this process called uh, this process is called Padhanam, self-study. And after self-study process, the next stage goes, which is called one one moment. I will uh, I will change the slide. Mananam. Mananam means we are trying to understand what it was about, what it was about. We are uh, uh, engaging our mind in this process of analysis, in this process of, in this process of analysis of what was written in this book or in this particular chapter which I have read. So there are two methods of Mananam which are described 
in this particular, in this nice book, The Art of Studying and Teaching Scriptures. The first one is Simha Avalokana, and the second one is Vihanga Valokana. Simha Avalokana means lion's glance, and Vihanga Valokana means bird's eye view. So this process of mananam can go in two ways. For example, I have read chapter from Bhagavad Gita, and Vihanga Valokana, bird's eye view, it is the way when I'm trying to understand the essence of the whole chapters without details, just the whole chapter. And uh, basically the way how we can understand the essence of particular chapter is very simple. One has to read the purport to the last verse of this chapter. Usually you can check it, you can check it. In Bhagavad Gita usually the purport to the last verse of the chapter contains the essence of the whole chapter. Usually Srila Prabhupada gives such purports. So you can, uh, you can get the essence like this, or you can recollect what you have read from the chapter, and you can get the uh, general impression of uh, the chapter itself. It is called Vihanga Valokana, bird's eye view. And at the same time, there is Simha Avalokana, or lion's glance. Lion's glance means what? Um, lion is very much focused on his victim, uh, victim. It can be a lamb, or it can be deer, or it can be any creature which Simha or lion is going to eat. Uh. So the same way, Simha Avalokana, in case of Mananam process, it means I take particular shloka from chapter, and I take particular word-by-word -word translation. And I'm trying to get into details of particular verse. I'm trying to understand the essence of this particular shloka, of this particular purport. It is two ways of mananam. And then, uh, if, um, a devotee, if a devotee is practicing this mananam process, it means he gives some food to his brain, to his mind, to digest. It means that if this process of mananam is uh, performed properly, then this, uh, this person will be able to remember Krishna the whole day. Means he has particular object of meditation. He already have read uh, some, something from Srila Prabhupada's books. He already put some fuel in his car, in his mental, uh, this mental mechanism in his mind. He already put some fuel. And now he can do his day-to-day -day work, day-to-day -day activities. But if before doing his day-to-day -day activities, he really, he or she, uh, really was observed in this process of reading sacred scriptures, then it means that something was taken from this process of reading. And this something that was taken, taken from this process of reading will help one to remain in Krishna consciousness the whole day. And then the next day we again take the book with intention to get some knowledge, to get some spiritual message which uh, Supreme Lord Sri Krishna decided to give me today. Krishna wants to tell me something. It is, it is my idea when I take Srila Prabhupada's book, I should think like this. Krishna wants to tell me something today. Let's see what he wants to tell me today. Let's open the page. <laughs> and we open the book and we read it and we get something for us to feel our connection with Krishna, our Bhakti Yoga for today. So it was the first part of, um, uh, I, I mean, we, uh, we uh, how to say, we covered about 50% of this process of studying the scriptures. I described about 50%, I described the first part, and the second part I will describe tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning I will describe 
other processes also. Uh, if you have some questions, please ask these questions. Thank you so much, Puruji. So, if there is any question, then you can ask them, hand raise kar sakte hain, and then I will mute them. Julie Gupta. Yes, Madhuri. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, please ask your question. Mataji, I have to. Yes, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Dandavat Varna. Hare Krishna. Uh, huh? Prabhuji, uh, how to. Uh, how to deal that person means uh, I mean everyone makes fun of devotee and devotion. How to deal them? Uh, I didn't understand the question. Go off. Maybe you can explain the question. Mataji, you can repeat it again. Repeat it again. Repeat it again. Repeat it again. Everyone, make, everyone makes fun of devo devotees and devotion. How to deal them? <laughs> okay, understood. Well, uh, I don't agree that everyone makes fun. Some people, they make fun. Some people take it seriously. How to deal with this? Well, Srila Rupa Goswami, he gives the definition of humility. Humility of a devotee uh, means... Uh, that he is indifferent, he, uh, he doesn't take seriously what materialistic people thinks, uh, think about uh, spiritual practitioners. If someone is able uh, not to take it seriously, it means he is humble. Uh, because we are practicing this and uh, we are doing this not just to get some prestige, or some honor from materialistic people. First of all, we do it in order to reestablish, to revive our relationships with Krishna. Uh, so uh, this story is about ourselves and Krishna, about Srila Prabhupada and ourselves, about spiritual master and ourselves. And uh, uh, this story, it is not about um, general masses of people or materialistic people, not about those who cannot appreciate it. But at the same time, these doors of uh, ISKCON movement are open for everyone. So if someone wants to join, uh, we don't mind. If they are not so much respectful to us, materialistic people, we should just meditate on the third verse of Shri Shri Shikshashtaka, Trinada Pisunichina, Tarora Vasahishnuna, Amanina Manadina Kirtanya Sadaharih, which means that one can chant holy names uh, uh, regularly every day without interruption if he has particular spiritual qualities, humility, tolerance, um, readiness to be respect, respectful to others, and uh, uh, he is free from expectations that others will respect me. So this freedom from these expectations is based on realistic worldview. Realistic worldview is such that we are in material world and we live in Kali Yuga and uh, living entities who are around us, mainly they came to this material world in order to enjoy their senses, especially in Kali Yuga. So they are not so much expected uh, to be appreciative to spiritual knowledge, to spiritual uh, message. But at the same time, it happens. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has particular mission to make uh, uh, all living entities, Krishna conscious living entities, even demons will be crying while chanting holy names with others. This prediction is given in Chaitanya Bhagavata, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavata. Even demons will be chanting holy names and crying while chanting holy names with others. So uh, it means what? It means that this kind of spiritual transformation 
that materialistic person who is not appreciative to spiritual message, after some time he becomes respectful and all these things, this miracle can happen. And when Srila Prabhupada was asked, can you do some miracle? Srila Prabhupada, he told that I already did this miracle by making, by making what? Gaurav Prabhu, do you remember this story? By making what? what? Uh, by making the, like the hippies into you know, devotees. Like they left yeah. all the meat and uh, all the four the regulative principles they are following and leaving the hippie life. Yeah, that's right. He made hippies from hippies. Uh, happy. They became happy. They were hippie and they became happy. So it means what? It means uh, uh, we have these people around us who are not following Krishna consciousness and we should understand that this miracle can take place and some of them can take Krishna consciousness seriously after some time, especially if we will be gentle with them, uh, if we will be feeding prasadam, feeding them prasadam, for example, and other things. Uh, some people will appreciate, some people will not appreciate, and we should not be so, uh, we should not be too much attached to uh, this, because this miracle happens not by our endeavors, it happens by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's arrangement and Srila Prabhupada's arrangement. And um, in some cases it can be so that we gave Srila Prabhupada's book to someone and he became Krishna devotee and we should not take credit to ourselves that I gave bhakti to that person. No, Srila Prabhupada gave that bhakti and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave this bhakti and we uh, had a fortune to act like an instrument in uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, lotus hands, lotus arms. Uh, so, uh, again, regarding your question, if someone makes fun uh, from uh, Krishna consciousness, it depends how he makes fun. If he is insulting devotees and is con, then we, we have a right to become angry and we have a right to debate with this person. But uh, better to do it only in case if we are sure if we, uh, if we, uh, how to say, um, uh, if, if we really think that we are able to convince, if we really think that we can convince. Otherwise, especially if materialistic person, if they don't want to be convinced, if they don't want to be changed, then they will not accept anything. So there are different cases. In some cases, uh, we do we do nothing. We do nothing. In some cases, we uh, do some attempts to convince. In some cases, we preach directly. But anyway, we should not be too much depend uh, dependent. We should not depend too much on their opinion about Krishna consciousness. They can make fun. They can make, uh, they can take it seriously, it depends on their consciousness. But our first business is to develop our own consciousness and to take it seriously, to take Krishna consciousness seriously. And uh, Srila Rupa Goswami, he gives this definition of Vaishnava humility, that those who take Krishna consciousness seriously, they don't take seriously opinions of those who are not able to take Krishna consciousness seriously. Because uh, they are fixed in their understanding that uh, Krishna consciousness is serious subject matter. Uh, and if we are not so much fixed, we have to stick to, and even if we are fixed, we have to stick to Sadhu Sangha, to Sadhu Sangha, to Devotees Association, to Vaishnava Association, which will help us to be uh, convinced that uh, Krishna consciousness is very important thing in our life. Does it answer on your question? Okay. Julie, Julie Gupta Mataji. Okay, so I hope Mataji. Uh, oh, okay. Your, okay. Okay. 
ओके और किसी का कोई प्रश्न है तो वो हैंड रेस कर सकते हैं प्रश्न किया Okay. So I think Pruji, you have made very uh, yourself. Yeah, very you can freely ask your questions if you have questions. Please do it. Please do it. Don't feel yourselves yourselves shy. But it looks like there is no questions, right? Yes. Yes, Pruji. Okay. Say thank you. See you tomorrow. Then see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pruji, for giving your association. सो so, हम हम सभी प्रूजी का धन्यवाद करेंगे वी विल ऑल थैंक प्रूजी बाय लाउडली चैंटिंग हरे कृष्णा महामंत्र हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू सो मच प्रूजी फॉर कमिंग एंड गिविंग योर एसोसिएशन हरे कृष्णा सी यू टुमारो हरे कृष्णा ओके सो Uh, आज का सेशन हम लोग uh, यही एंड करते हैं एंड प्लीज uh, आप लोग कल ज्वाइन करिएगा प्लीज ज्वाइन टुमारो फॉर द सेकंड सेशन प्रो जी का जो सेकंड सेशन है कल है सो so, आप लोग प्लीज ज्वाइन करिएगा एंड वन मोर थिंग कि हम सब और इंटरैक्टिव uh, uh, बना सकते हैं सेशन को अपना कैमरा ऑन करके सो प्लीज थोड़ा सा आप लोग कल एक्चुअली थोड़ा सा टाइम निकालिएगा ऐसी जगह में बैठने के लिए जहाँ थोड़ा हम लोग कैमरा ऑन कर सकते हैं यूजुअली हमारी सिचुएशन ऐसी होती है कि हम कैमरा ऑन नहीं कर पाते कल थोड़ा सा टाइम निकाल के हम लोग एटलीस्ट हाफ आवर हम लोग कैमरा ऑन कर सकते हैं सो दैट प्रो जी भी अच्छा फील करें दैट He is giving some lectures, so he also take more interest. उनको भी ज़्यादा interest लगेगा if हम लोग camera on करेंगे. So that's it. Uh, and uh, आप सभी लोगों का बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद इस session में join करने के लिए. So हम लोग कल मिलते हैं. Hari Krishna.